Hello everybody, Rocker Rudy here, and today we're going to talk about the ECM Synchronica Espresso Machine. So I'm going to do a quick review, go over the features, what comes in the box, and brew a shot. Uh, so first of all, uh, one thing I did not do was an unboxing video. Uh, quite frankly, personally, I hate unboxing videos. A lot of time is wasted looking at the stupid box to discover what. This was inside of it. Oh, great. So quickly, what comes with this machine? Uh, right over here, everything laid out. You have the drain box that goes to the <clears throat> drip tray. I'll show you that in a minute. You get the hose you can hook up to the machine if you want to plumb it. Brass fitting, a blind basket to do a quick cleaning. Two porta filters, double spout porta filter, single spout porta filter. You get this nice tamper that you actually don't have to buy another one. We've been using this uh, now for the past few weeks since we've had the machine, it works great. A little cleaning brush, and one thing to point out is that the machine comes with these two wing nuts uh, attached to the bottom. And what these actually attach to is the rotary pump. And that keeps the rotary pump from vibrating around during shipping. So when you first get the machine, whether it's the ECM Synchronica or the Profitech Pro uh, 700, or possibly one of the other ones. These will be in here and you have to take these out before you operate the machine. These hold the pump down in place and won't allow the pump to actually move around in its grommets with these on here and the machine would vibrate like crazy. So just remember to take these out when you do purchase the machine. So quick overview of some of the features here. Now um, I purchased this one over the Profitech Pro 700 and basically these two machines are identical internally. They're basically the same. The differences are one, you get that tamper, uh, which is nice with, with the ECM Synchronica. And you get these levers instead of the knobs uh, for hot for the steam and hot water. So quickly you just uh, you can do a tap. Oh let me see. There we go. Do a tap, operate it or block it in. As you can see, uh the steam power in this machine is uh Pretty good. Doesn't take too long to froth to heat up the milk. And of course you have your hot water wand over here. Same operation. Tap. Or lock it in. And it dumps into the drip tray. And once I said earlier, you get a drain you get that drain plug in the bottom of the drip tray here. That's basically an Allen screw in the top and a little nut in the bottom. And then you can put that little drain pan underneath if you decide to plumb in the drain. So you get E61 brew group head, you get a steam wand, hot water wand, obviously you saw, and here's your lever to activate the pump. And as you can see, rotary pump, pretty quiet. And you get a shot timer here and a PID display. So as you can see, this, uh, this machine has a PID, which you can control the, the brew temperature and the steam temperature. So it's pretty easy to program. And... Uh, excuse my pajamas. This, this is a Saturday morning, as you can see in the reflection of the machine. Quick uh, programming. You double tap. They tap these two buttons. If I can do it, there we go. You got temperature one, which is the brew temperature. Uh, go down to temperature two, which is the steam temperature, and down to clean. And you can set how many shots this machine will um, will run through before it will display this message on the screen for cleaning the brew group head which is what the blind basket was for. And as you can see right now, it's heating up uh, my steam boiler and here's the brew boiler. So it goes back and forth between brew boiler temperature, which with the first dot, the first dot indicates, second dot indicates the steam temperature. So when I first got it, I was like, what the heck is 1.95 and 25.2? So the dot, this signifies what boiler it's actively, what the display is looking at. So here's the brew boiler and switch over to the steam boiler here you go now how it heats up is the brew boiler has priority so it'll heat the brew boiler first once it gets to the program temperature which I have here by 200 degrees it'll then switch over and then heat up the steam the steam boiler so we have 200 degrees on the brew boiler and now you'll see the steam boiler heating up to 255 when it's set for uh, pretty simple you have power light this indicates uh, the boilers are hot heating up and under the drip tray here, it's kind of difficult to do this with hand. Oh, I can do it. Come on. Some other, there we go. 
And underneath the drip tray, you have two switches. You can kind of see one is for the reservoir tank or the plumbing. And all that switch does is it shuts off the sensor to the actual uh, tank inside the machine so it won't try to fill it from the reservoir. And then you have the steam boiler here, switch for on and off on the steam boiler. Let's leave it on all the time, so whatever. It also comes with this uh, little tray. So if you have little cups like this guy here, you have a little, little shot cups like this, you put it on the tray, it's not that way, it's not so low, and it's splashing all over the place when you pour in your shot. Now, why I purchased this over the Profitech Pro 700, uh, it's $200 more, yes, and it's already an expensive machine already, but uh, we do prefer these lever handles instead of the knobs. Uh, my wife, who worked as a barista for 10 years, like, oh yeah, the knobs are, those are a great way to go, nice and simple. So you don't have to sit here and turn something while you're trying to heat up your milk or pull your shot, for example. So that's one thing, and you also get that tamper. Basically, it's, and also these port filters. So these port filters, you can see, are angled. So as you go to tamp a shot, it's pretty level as you go to tamp so it gives you a nice base to actually put the tamp down and put the coffee in there and it has a nice chrome handle there you can see and it's got good weight it's pretty balanced see here without having to try to do anything it's pretty balanced on the from the porta filter basket side to the end so it's not that I, not that it really matters as i'm not making 50 coffees a day but it feels nice in the hand so without further ado, why don't we say we get a coffee? So I'm going to pause my video here, get set up, and I'll get ready to go. Alright, so I have my milk. Uh, now I'm lactose intolerant, so I have to use almond milk. It doesn't froth as well as obviously as regular milk does, but it is okay. That's what I'm making my coffee with today, so we're actually going to just make a regular coffee. My porter filter in here. My grinder. Oh, that's grinding. Come back with my coffee, which has been on my cup, which is still warm on the top. Heating tray on the top here, as you can see, some of the holes. This gets pretty warm and does a nice job of keeping the cups nice and warm on top here. All right, let me get my tamper. Back over here to the right here. I'm doing it with less one hand. Now, I'm pretty new to this coffee stuff. But my wife has been doing this for a long time, and she helped, you know, after watching like a million YouTube videos, uh, do all this crap. She, uh, been helping me a little bit in getting this done. So I'm going to tamp this down. With one hand, this is basically impossible, so. Yes, I know this is not the proper technique for tamping, but I don't care, whatever. The coffee's still gonna taste good. I'll polish how this comes out. Ah, not too bad. Ah, look at that, one handed. Oh, look at me. I'm Superman. Okay, so we got that ready. So let's do some steaming of the milk here. And I'm gonna try this one handed too. Purge out my wand. And you see that, the, that these. <clears throat> flanges here there's the wands are a little bit at an angle which makes it a little easier to position them into a little frothing picture here so here we go Ooh, what's this oh. yeah this is not good one-handed I'm holding my camera yeah, this is coming out like crap. I should do this with two people. Or uh, four hands. I thought it takes like 30 seconds or so to get this up to temperature. You can see it uh, does a pretty good job of steaming here. I don't know if I can shut this off at the same time. 
that's probably why you get the levers. You can actually do all this stuff with one hand. I'll get my rag real quick here. And the nook is just about there. Yeah, with one hand, huh? I can't say this is a perfect cup of froth almond milk, so not gonna be the greatest anyway. So I'm getting this little tray out of the way, put my cup in there, and now we'll pull a shot. And the other thing that's nice, as you come my sort of here, is when you activate this lever, it does a little timer on the PID display. And, uh, take a look, see how this is coming out. So the coffee I'm using here is the Starbucks Espresso Roast, I like what it actually likes. I'm going to brew this for a few more seconds. Okay. There you have it. There's our coffee. Get some creamer on top there. Alright, take my awfully frothed milk with one hand. Coffee, and we're gonna see if I can make some really shitty latte art. And yeah, there you go, nice shitty latte art. There's my coffee, and here's my short review of the ECM Sacronica espresso machine. Uh, we like it. We've been very happy. No, obviously this is super expensive and this is way more money than I wanted to spend, but I'm actually happy that I spent the money that I did. Spending a couple hundred extra bucks uh, for this model, probably over the profit tech for the handles and the different porta filters and of course that came with that tamper. Uh, there's Rock Ruta. Thanks again. Uh, if you have any questions or if you want to see anything else of the machine like the inside of it, I can try to take it apart and show you the inside so you can actually see that what they show on the whole lot they loves video is actually what's in here uh thanks again guys have a good one